Yes people, how are we all doing? It's Ashton, here to talk about a seriously good legend. I, I can't believe I've just made that pun again. As you can probably tell, I've played a fair amount of Seer over the past couple of days, like a lot of people have. I mean, is there a single lobby that you can play in where you don't just hear this for the entirety of the game? I mean, please, God, make it stop. So I'm here to give you 15 of the best tips and tricks I've learned over the past few days of how to play Seer in the best possible way in Apex Legends Season 10. If you guys do go on to enjoy today's video then make sure to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel for more regular Apex Legends content from myself. But without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. So the first tip I have with you guys is about Seer's passive, his heartbeat sensor ability. Obviously this is a really strong ability and one of the best ways that you can use it is to spin yourself around 360 degrees and what that's going to do is it's going to give you an idea of how many people are in the surrounding area within 75 meters. A good seer player will rarely be stuck up upon and ambushed because they're always going to be knowing how many squads are in the surrounding area because they're going to be constantly able to check around them for heartbeats or signs of enemy teams so you're always going to be able to have that information available to you. Now while Seer's passive is very very effective and can be used really effectively alongside the tactical ability, you actually don't need to use the passive alongside the tactical. You can actually just hold down the tactical button or Q if you're on PC and you're going to be able to sense how many people are through the walls or in the surrounding area with your tactical as well. Now you can do this by watching for the reticle to change colour. That's going to mean when it changes colour that an enemy is within range of your tactical ability, meaning it is going to hit when you release it. I've seen a bunch of people run around and just ADS with their fists out before using their tactical ability and they don't actually have to do that. They can just hold down the attack button and you get the same effect and it just wastes time if you do it the other way around. Another thing a lot of people don't realize with Seer is that you can sprint, run around and jump whilst holding down that attack button, meaning you can pretty much just run around with a pre-charged attack ready to fire at all times. Like, it's really effective if you just want to be running around with that attack ready to fire off if a team is around the corner, you know they're there, or if you're just wanting to be extra ready to hit that scan, you can do that. You can hold the attack button and sprint and jump and have full ranges of movement whilst holding down the attack button. Now another little known fact about Seer's passive ability is the fact that when you ADS with the heartbeat sensor, you can actually detect people from over 75 meters away. So long as they're within line of sight, it doesn't matter how far away a person is, if you can see them on your screen, then your heartbeat sensor can and will pick them up. Now a lot of new Seer players are going to be using the ability for that initial scan, because of course it does last for around 8 seconds, which is the longest scan in the game. Our Crypto's Drone, but Crypto's Drone doesn't really count. But in fact, in high tier Apex, one of the most effective ways of using Seer is in fact to wait to use his tactical, not at the start of a fight, but until after you've dealt some damage in order to cancel people's heals. You can also use the attack to cancel people reviving and also with certain abilities like grappling or Valk's jetpack. You can also use Seer's tactical as a flashbang. That's because when it does hit an enemy, it is going to make a flash go up on their screen, making them blind for a short, short amount of time, meaning you are going to be able to get a few shots off on them whilst they're blinded. When you're playing a Seer, you don't want to be the first one into a fight. A Seer is most effective when he already knows where the enemies are because you're more likely to land those scans and know where to throw the ult effectively. And whilst we're on the topic of throwing the ult effectively, you really want to be careful not to waste your ult. Now whilst we do get the ult every 90 seconds, which is pretty pretty fast there have been so many instances where i've seen people run in and throw the ult just because they know at least one enemy is in the area but because they haven't seen any of them in fact they end up wasting it because it's a solo or a duo and by the time the third party arrives their ult has already run out when they could have used it much more effectively and saved it by killing that solo or duo and then waiting to use it for the third party so just make sure you're not too trigger happy with that ultimate ability even though you do get it back pretty fast. Whilst we're on the topic of Seer's ultimate, when you're using his ultimate, you wanna make sure you're throwing it in those hard to reach places. Seer's ultimate does have a decent health pool of around 120, but that being said, enemies still can destroy it if they see it. So the best thing to do is to throw it in those out of sight places that enemies just aren't able to shoot. Whether or not it's behind cover or on some high ground or just in an awkward spot that people wouldn't usually look in, this can really help you have the full longevity of your ultimate rather than it getting destroyed soon after you've thrown it down. 
Now we've talked a little bit about Sears tactical ability and how much value you can get out of it. And the most effective way to get the most and maximum amount of value out of it is to not waste the tactical at the start of a fight. While it definitely can be nice to know what shields the enemies have, you can just as easily find this out by shooting a few shots at them, and although they're going to be scanned for a few seconds, more than likely they will just hold back until the scan runs out, and that's not going to be getting you the most amount of value out of the tactical ability as you can get. Saving that tactical until you've dealt damage so you can cancel heals or cancel revives is a way more effective way of using the tactical, also having an enemy highlighted whilst they are weaker is more likely to make your teammates going to want to push up and fight them because they're going to know they're weaker rather than if they're full health because I mean what's the use of knowing an enemy is full health and scanned if they're just in a strong position and they're going to hold an angle on you. It's way more effective to hold the tactical ability until the middle of the fight. Another super effective way of using Seer is to use it to counter enemy defensive Gibraltar bubbles. What I mean by this is when an enemy Gibraltar bubbles to either heal res or just you know pop a battery or reload you can use Seer's tactical and it's going to cover almost the entirety of Gibby's defensive bubble. If you time it right this means people aren't going to be able to get that revive off, get that shield battery off or use the bubble to reset in a way in which they usually would making Gibraltar essentially useless. Genuinely I think this is probably one of the main reasons that Seer is going to push Gibraltar out of the meta for high level play and I really can't wait to see how this pans out in comp over the next few days and weeks. Now similarly to Bloodhound, Seer is one of those legends that can get caught out in the middle of his animation whilst using his tactical ability. And that's going to be why it's super important for you guys playing Seer not to panic attack. Now whilst it can result in the enemies being flashbanged like we talked about earlier, more often than not they are probably going to lazy you whilst you are in that tactical animation and that's definitely not the ideal way of using his tack. You don't want to be using it as a last resort if someone catches you off guard. And if you do end up doing that, then you're probably going to get punished for it. Now, as I'm sure you're all aware by now, Seer Ultimates come around pretty fast, every 90 seconds. So I'm sure you've been in a situation in Cap City, in the streamer building, where about three or four different Seer Ults come in at the same time. And all of a sudden, every single team in the area knows exactly where you are. And there's just no chance at all of you getting away from that situation. This is the kind of situation in which you know you can't destroy the enemy seer ult, so the best course of action is to use your own. That way you're on a level playing field. Everyone knows where everyone is, and whilst it's still not ideal that they know your exact location all the time, because you're using your ult after they are, you're going to have the information on them for a bit longer. So if the fight does get drawn out, you're going to know where they are for a little bit longer than they're going to know where you are. So one of the best counters to a seer ultimate is just to use your own Seer Ultimate, because then everyone is on a level playing field. And last but not least, the most hidden fact about Seer is the fact that he can scan recon beacons. I mean, no one's talking about this. Probably because it's pretty lame and boring. I mean, who likes to scan beacons? But, but guys, Seer can scan beacons. Pretty cool, right? Right? Let me know in the comment section down below if there were any tips or tricks that you think I missed out for Seer. I'd love to hear them. I always love hearing your guys' feedback. But that has been all for today's video and I hope you have enjoyed. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more regular Apex Legends content from myself. And until next time guys, it has been your boy Ashton and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy and goodbye.